911 emergency. Oh my God, oh, oh my God, somebody killed my dad. 911, what's your emergency? Hey, uh, I, need, I need you guys to get out here. I need the police out here right now. What's going on, sir? Uh, my neighbors have been murdered. What's the address? 911? Yeah, I find a division of Child Protective Services and one of my social workers is missing. How long has this person been missing? Um, since this afternoon. We'll get she got a show for her case today at 2 o'clock. She's coming out. coming out. It's working now. Is that the same battery? No, it's a new one. The other one must be defective. It said it was fully charged, but I couldn't get any power. Why don't you leave it on for a while? Make sure it's okay. Yeah, will do. You happy? I'm happy. I don't think Mr. Pearson will be. I put the stills on the disc. Yep. I'll call him in the morning. It's Mom. What? Hello? Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. What is she saying? Okay. All right. Is he dead? Not yet. Well, John, what did she say? She said the treatments didn't work. I can't believe it. We have to go up there. I can't do that. Kenny, we already discussed this. I know, I just... I can't. And we have work. We'll figure it out. How's that one working? It's fine. Jesus. You're not playing around. I told you. I want to tape everything. You all set? Yeah. I have everything I need.
fucking North Carolina. Home sweet home. I don't think so. I'll be right back. Housekeeping's gonna love us. Sleep it off, bro. What time is it? It's a quarter after three. This isn't good, John. We're here way too early. We're not doing anything wrong. We're just sitting here drinking coffee and talking. Government drones. Believe me, we're not here too early. They'll be punching out at four o'clock, five at the latest. They work their, their eight hour days, 40 hour weeks, collecting their paychecks at the end of the week, and they get crazy benefits. Who do you think has more rights in that building over there, huh? The scumbags or their victims? To protect and serve. Is that him? I think so. You think so? It's him. Do you see him? I see him. He's turning. I know. I'm not gonna lose him. I have his home address. We can GPS it if we have to. I just needed to see him. Now what? We wait. Get your camera. Okay. Wait a minute! We need to talk about what we're doing here. There's nothing to talk about. I already got it started. Now come on.
Where's he at? He's upstairs. It's him. Yeah, it's him. Where's his wife? She died a few years back. He's here all by himself now. Now, I'm gonna take the tape off. But if you yell for help or if you do anything stupid, I'll end it. You understand? Take whatever you want and leave. This is very manageable for you two, as long as this doesn't go any further than a robbery. What makes you think we're here to rob you? What is it that you want? You tell me. I don't know. You don't know? No. Well, you're a judge. Yes. Yes, I am. Then it's your job, your gift, to take the evidence presented to you and make a decision. Two armed intruders hold a judge against his will in his home. Robbery is not the motive. With all your years of experience, your vast legal knowledge, tell me. What is your conclusion? Do I know you two? We're not important. I'm a family court judge, not criminal. We're not criminals. Neither one of us has ever committed a crime or has served a day in jail. Okay. I didn't mean anything by it. You're both very young. You don't want to throw your lives away. We're not worried about our lives. You're going to say whatever you have to say to get out of this. Get back to, to your Saturday golf outings and your Sunday family dinners. Having a good time, enjoying life while you sit in your courtroom acting like God. The reckless decisions you make destroy lives. I fully understand the impact that my rulings have on people's lives. That is not something that I take lightly. Uh huh. I stand by every decision I've ever made. Well, so do I. Jo Holy shit. Oh my god. Did you get that? Yeah. I can't believe it. I mean, I can't believe it. This is really happening. Did you bring the robe? You got it? Yeah. Grab the papers and let's get out of here.
hasn't changed a bit. I know. There it is. You want to stop? No. Remember you love that place. Mom would take me there when you and Andrea were at school. She let me play the video games and then we'd get ice cream and walk home. It's kind of a thing. Why are we here? John? I remember Dad brought the three of us here. You were at short. Andrea was at second. I was right here on pitcher's mound. Dad was over there in the batter's box. He was hitting us pop-ups and grounders. He hit you a fly ball, but it was a little too high, but you stayed under it. Even when it came down on you and you misjudged it, you hung in there. The ball, the ball hit you on the shoulder, and I knew you were hurt, but you wouldn't cry. You were a tough little kid. I almost didn't recognize it. It looks like a completely different house without that tree out front. Yeah, that thing was dead when we lived here. I remember Mom used to rag on Dad constantly to cut it down. Well, somebody cut it down. They've done some landscaping. Looks like they replaced the front door, too. It's someone else's home now. Hey guys, what can I get for you? I'll take a pack of tonic. I'll take a house beer. All right. Here you go, guys. Great. Thanks. Okay, so, um, what's with the cameras? Go ahead, tell her. We're shooting a documentary. Really? What about? It's about people and how their actions affect others. Are you gonna be showing good people or bad? Is there a difference? I think so. I think for the most part, people are either good or bad. I disagree. I think that there's good and bad in everyone. So Hitler had good in him? Sure, at one point he did. I mean, I don't think he was born evil. I think he probably experienced things in his life that made him go the way he did. So you believe in free will? Exactly. See, I I believe we're genetically predisposed to become what we are. And we get our parents' hair color, their eyes, their looks. And I believe genetically we get you know, personalities, their intellect, strengths, weaknesses. 
You don't think that we learned some of that from them? I don't. I mean, how else would you explain adopted children? You know, raised in good homes, ending up in legal trouble or on drugs? See, I think there's something inside them that's stronger than what they were taught. That's an interesting point. I actually think it's a combination of both. I agree that we're genetically predisposed to certain things, good or bad. But I also believe that life experiences, our environment, can tilt us either way. I can buy that. Makes sense to me. Now, karma is something I believe in. I think we're all connected some way, somehow. And our actions always come back to us. Life's a circle. We're room 213. Cool. Which way? Straight ahead. I'm shot. Yeah. So am I. You should have gone home with that bartender. She wasn't into me. That's not true. She was talking to you the whole time we were there. She was just being nice. Besides, they get better tips if they flirt with you. Did you get her name at least? Yeah, Teresa. She likes to be called T. T, huh? Well, T had great tits. <laughs> yeah, she did. There's a shitstorm coming our way, Kenny. What are you talking about? I'm talking about our karma. I've been thinking about that all night. The judge. Had a family. What'd they do to deserve that? This will come back to us in one form or another. I kind of see us as the judge's karma. But where does it end? I don't know. I mean, I guess it ends when it's supposed to end. It's out of our hands now. We can stop it before it gets worse. So what are you saying? Do you want to stop? Yeah. Yeah, I want to stop. I thought this was the right thing to do. But now, I'm not so sure. Okay, John. You're the only one in my life I've ever been able to count on. Squared away the room. You look like you got raped by a gang of swinging dicks. <laughs> There's no way I look that bad. So last night, is that the booze speaking? No. No, it wasn't. What do you want to do about the footage? I'll take care of it when we get home. Do you think it's a good idea to wait? What the fuck? What is it? Pull over. Did they say something about the judge? Hey, pull the fuck over! John!
John, will you tell me what's wrong? There's nothing wrong, except that I shouldn't have second-guessed myself. Here, take a look at this. Oh, shit. Don't you see? We are doing the right thing. This is crazy. I don't know what to say. My instincts were right. Until I started to doubt myself. But who wouldn't? I mean, look at what we're doing. But if this isn't a sign, then I don't know what is. What are you doing? Wait for me! Shit! Jesus Christ. I know. You think anyone heard us? I don't think so. I mean, I don't know. I didn't see anybody out there. Here. Come on. Crazy fucker. I can't believe he came at me like that. Can you imagine charging at someone with a gun? No. Now, I know you're both scared. You don't know where this is going. You don't have any control of the situation. It's a terrible feeling, isn't it? To be helpless. To know that your safety and well-being is in the hands of someone else. When someone has that kind of power over you, you want compassion, right? Yeah. Okay, I know you're both anxious to speak, and I want to hear what you have to say, but I don't hmm? want a repeat of what happened upstairs. Understand? <laughs> Remember, you're handcuffed and tied up, and I have a knife. Please don't hurt us. We'll do whatever you want. Look, I don't know what you boys want. But whatever it is, I'm sure I can deal with it without involving her. No, don't hurt either of us. Please, let her go. No. Please. Why are you doing this? We've done nothing to you. That's right. You didn't do anything. That's very noble of you, to sacrifice yourself for your wife. Not everyone would do that. Thank you. But the real test would be to put yourself out there for a complete stranger. Could you do that? Yes. We do it all the time. Really? Yes. We're both very active with our church, and, and we, we do food drives and, and clothing drives for the needy. We help run a charity, run my pregnancy. And, and every Thanksgiving, we serve dinner to the homeless. And you tell all of your friends about your selfless acts, don't you? No. Of course you don't. But... It's not why we do it. Then why do you do it? Because it's the right thing to do. You have some nerve breaking into our home, holding us against our will, and passing judgment on, on our integrity. Dude, I will pass judgment! Because everything you just said is a bunch
bunch of superficial bullshit. Nothing you've done has changed anyone's lives. You think feeding dinner to the homeless one day of the year does anything? What about the other 364 days of the year? Hey, look at me. You think your donations to your charities ever reach the needy? For your shitty furniture? For your unwed pregnant teens? You think that makes a difference? Yes, it does. I'm talking about really making a difference when it's personal and right in front of you. I'm not talking about sending in money to people you never meet or serving food to people then sending them on their way or dropping off furniture and wishing them good luck and then going back to your comfortable life. What do you want? Let me put it to you this way. What would you do if someone came banging on your door in the middle of the night, bloody and beaten, begging for help? Would you make a simple phone call to the police? Or would you slam the door shut and do nothing because you didn't want to get involved? Oh my God. That's what this is about? You don't understand. No, don't worry. Hey. We were scared. We didn't know what to do. Oh, my God. Please go. Please. How's this for an explanation? See no evil. Hear no evil. Speak no evil. <laughs> Kenny, what are you doing? So what do you think? Here you go. Thank you. Enjoy. I need to get some coffee. So do I. You hungry? Not really. Is that you? Yeah. It's Andrea. Andrea? Yeah, it's her. It's gotta be about Dad. Well, answer it. I don't know what to say. Just talk to her. You stayed in touch with her. Let's just see if she leaves a voicemail. Hey, how's everything going? Hi, Kenny. It's your big sister. I'm not sure why I'm calling. I know you and John want to be left alone. But for what it's worth, I saw Dad last night. I actually just left their house and he's getting worse. I thought you should Come on, Kenny. Jesus Christ. Kenny! I'm over here! Where's here? Down by the stream. What fucking stream? How are you making out? Good. Let me see what you got.
These look really great, bro. Thanks. Listen, I know this is kind of how you process things, but uh, we really got to get moving. Yeah. Just give me a few more minutes. So what do you want to do? Just sit here and wait. Let her go inside. We'll give it a little time. Shit. Try to block her. It's too risky. It's daylight. Somebody might see us. So you want to leave? No. Let's just follow her and see what happens. What do you think? Think she's gonna remove the kids? I don't think so. The kids look too happy. It's a foster home. It's their escape from insanity. Until they decide to send them back to their parents. The same people that put them here to begin with. Is there anyone around? I don't see anyone. Well, keep an eye out. You want to do this now? This might be the best chance we have. John, let's think about this. She probably has another appointment today. Or she's expected back at her office. Wait! If she doesn't show up, the police are going to look for her. Let's do it at her house tonight. It'll buy us more time. I'm not doing this in front of her kids. Jesus! Did anybody fucking see him? Come on, help me!
Are you okay? Yeah. I'm gonna carry her in. I did! She got out of it! I'm gonna get her inside the fucking house! This house once brought happiness. It brought safety and security when everything was crazy. <laughs> There's an older couple that owned this house. They couldn't have children of their own, so they filled it with foster kids. Do you remember them? Fred and Helen Decker. That's right. I'm surprised you remember their names. I figured you'd know them by some state assigned code. They were good people. They were great people. Fred passed away about eight years ago. I know he did. And I know Helen lost this place about five years ago. She did everything she could to try to keep it. But it was just too much for her after losing Fred. So after helping others for most of her life, she now gets to spend what little time she has left in a state-run nursing home. Where she could be taken care of for a change. She's just another number. We're all just numbers, right? How we live, how we die, how much money we make, and the decisions are made that affect people's lives based on statistics. I never looked at the two of you that way. What did you say? I remember you. John and Kenneth Stiles and your, your sister Andrea. Obviously you're both a lot older now, but I recognized you right away and the way the two of you interact with each other, it hasn't changed. I don't know why you're doing this to me. You don't. I don't. I did everything I could to protect the three of you. I had you removed from an abusive home and placed in a safe environment here with the Deckers. I tried to help you. But you sent us back to our parents. It's always in the best interest of the children to be with their biological parents. Even if there's abuse? Of course not. When there's abuse, we remove the children, and the parents are given a case plan, and if they follow it, then they'll regain custody. And I'm assuming my parents followed it to perfection. They did everything they were required to do. I had to tell the judge that. And in his divine wisdom, he sent us back to them. It's not our goal to break up families. Our first priority is to protect the children. Like in our case. Your parents demonstrated that they had a safe and stable home. A safe, stable home? Do you have any idea how horrific the abuse was when you sent us back to them? When I came to your house, everything seemed okay. Oh, bullshit! You think checking up on us every here and there did anything? You don't think we all put on our smiley faces for you when you stopped by? You should have told me. Your parents weren't going to admit anything. The neighbors didn't want to get involved. 
the abuse was bad before you removed us. But it went to a whole other level when they moved us to that house in the woods where no one heard us. And they did whatever they wanted. I'm sorry. We should have never gone back to them. All of your studies and charts and statistics removed us from a safe, stable home and sent us back to the people that hurt us. I have spent my life fighting to protect children. I am on the front lines every day. Don't you think the red tape frustrates me? Not only do I have to fight the parents, but I have to fight the system. I have something I want to show you. Here's the court order, removing us from our parents. And here's the court order, kicking us back to them. What one hand giveth, the other hand taketh away. It breaks my heart that we got it wrong. It was our hearts that were broken, because you got it wrong. What about my boys? Your boys will feel the same pain that was inflicted on us. Not me, your parents. Is this your goal here? To destroy as many lives as you can because you had a shitty childhood? Well, guess what? You're not the only ones. My boys have not had a walk in the park either. Their father is a violent alcoholic. I tried to fix him because that's who I am. It took me years, years to realize that I couldn't. And I finally took the boys and I left. If something happens to me, my ex-husband will raise them. You realize that, right? How do you think they're going to affect society with that kind of upbringing? I'm their Helen Decker. Whatever happens to me in this room. Right now, we'll hurt innocent people for years to come. John? Turn it off. We can't just leave her here! That's exactly what we're gonna do. Wait a minute. This is my life too. It's not all about you. I know that. You think I don't? This is about the two of us making things right. Yeah? And how are we gonna do that when we're sitting behind bars? There's no doubt the cops are looking for her. She isn't going anywhere. I tied her right this time. Okay. So she might not get out tonight or tomorrow. But she's eventually gonna get out of there, John. And when she does, she's gonna tell them all about us. So then go take care of her. I'm not going to do that. This is your brilliant idea. You deal with it. Oh, so I put a gun in your head and made you do this? No, obviously not. But like with everything, it's, it's your plans and your terms, and, and I just went along with it. We talked about this for years. No, you talked about this for years. I just agreed with you. So you don't share any responsibility in this? That's not what I'm saying. How can I say that with a fucking documentary? And by the way, what's up with that? With what? This videotaping our way to the goddamn death penalty. You know why we're taping this. No, I don't. Kenny, you know why we're taping this. No, I really don't. It doesn't make any sense. But it does. This means something to us. This doesn't mean shit to me, John. Other than the fact that I've completely fucked up my life now. Jesus Christ. You really don't know. I'm done. Why don't you go drink now? Kenny.
No, John. I'm out of here. Can I say something? There's nothing else to say. I mean, all my life I've followed you blindly. And I wanted to get back to those people just as badly as you did. I can't deny that. But you don't even have a plan here. Taping everything? Leaving her here to testify against us? There's no going back. There was no going back the second we pulled out of our driveway. I can't do this anymore. I'll see if I can find a bus stop when we get into Kinersburg. Maybe somebody at the helm can tell me where to go. You going with me? I'd like to pay my respects. Is it on? Yeah. We're on a break for some reason. Hi, Helen. You know totally what I mean. This is a Hello. For downtime for some reason. Do you remember us? I do. Fred and I were just talking about the two of you the other day. You were? Yeah. Where's Andrea? She couldn't come with us. She's been uh, helping out our parents. They were troubled people. You remember them well. Come here and let me hug you. Thank you. No, thank you, Helen, for everything you and Fred did for us. We just want you to know how much we love you. How much we appreciate the time we spent at your home. That means the world to me. Kenny, put down that camera and give me a hug. Okay. You were always so quiet. I'm not quiet. Fred always tells that same story about you. That boy in the neighborhood was picking on your brother. He was older than you, right? Yeah, by a few years. That's what I thought. Well, anyway, he roughed up John in front of our house. Fred and I saw it happen. But before we could get outside to break it up, you came out of nowhere and jumped on that boy's back. You were punching him and biting him. And he spun around like a top. He couldn't shake you off. Fred always says that being quiet doesn't mean you're weak. He admires your loyalty to each other. I didn't see that same type of loyalty from Andrea. I remember something different about that day. When Fred and I came outside, I saw her standing there. She didn't do anything to help you. Andrea always looked out for Andrea. That one tested my patience. High definition. She was nasty to me, this morning, but loved Fred. She Ellen always began this hour went with continuing coverage attention. of a missing Carlton social worker. As we reported earlier, the woman was last seen yesterday afternoon at a local restaurant. Her name is Linda Hallett. She's 44 years Jesus. old and a single mother Shh. of two. Linda's a white female, 5'9", 125 pounds, John, blonde shut hair, up. green eyes. Co-workers contacted authorities late yesterday afternoon when Linda failed to report back to the United Family Services Office in Woodsboro, where she's worked for the past 22 years. Now, police will not comment if the social worker's disappearance is connected to the murder of family court judge William Stevens, whose body was found yesterday in his home. Searches you left your baseball bat Grant out on the front yard. At this hour. Make sure you bring it if in before it rains. Information regarding Linda we grabbed it, whereabouts, you were urged to call police We didn't immediately. forget about it. Can one of you tell Fred that dinner's ready? Were dealt an emotional blow yeah. yesterday when authorities I'll tell found him. a man and his wife dead in their home. A spokeswoman for the Tannersville Police Department says that 46-year-old Alan McGrath and his wife, 45-year-old Judy McGrath, were found murdered in their basement. John, we can't stay here. Deaths have not we have to go. But the spokeswoman yeah. says they suffer. We have to go now. Wound. I'll take you over to the bus station right now. Wherever you want to go. I'm 
sorry, Kenny. Sorry for fucking up your life. You're right. I'm doing this without any regard for you. I'll do whatever I can to get you out of this. I'll destroy everything. I'll tell them I made you help me. That's not how it happened. I was there every step of the way. I didn't look out for you. Yeah, you did. You know I was right about what I said last night. It's not all about you. It's about me too. It's about the two of us. Reclaiming our lives, right? About not letting others define us as victims. Like we talked about. No more of this. That's it. Good. You know, John, it's always been about me and you. It's never gonna change. You know, I'm not going anywhere. It doesn't look like anybody's home. Shannon's probably at Doug's this week. I hope so. We're good. She's out. Try the windows. Come on. Andrea is divorced well. I'd say so. Don't touch anything. She'll notice. Believe me. I know. Let's wait up in her room. Shannon looks just like Andrea. She looks like Doug. What are you doing? I'm just looking around. What the fuck are you up to, Andrea? John? What was that? John? You okay? Holy shit. John! Kenny. Kenny! 
two of you want to kill me? I'm your sister. Yeah? And mom and dad are our parents. What does that matter with our fucked up family? So I'm the same as them? You know what you did to us. I did what I had to do to survive. Just like now. The two of you should have known better than to come after me. Come on! Come on, goddammit! Wait! No! no. I'll always find a way to survive. I must say, this is some riveting cinema. So what did you have in mind for me? What are you talking about, Andrea? Oh, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Everyone on these cameras had a profound meaning in your lives. I assume I'm no different. Kenny, do you know? No. You're the false protector. No, oh, what? The false face must hide what the false heart doth know. <laughs> You're quoting Shakespeare. I can only imagine what you were going to do to me. We were going to cut off your face to show your true face underneath. Well, then it's a good thing I watched the news. I knew it was the two of you the minute I saw that this morning. I had a feeling I was on your to-do list. You never looked out for us. And who looked out for me? It doesn't matter. It does matter. No, it doesn't. It didn't have to be everybody for themselves. Kenny and I never did that. We trusted you as our older sister. And you wanted us to trust you so you could constantly set us up with mom and dad. You lured us into the secret room for the first time, remember? I learned at a very young age to look out for myself. At our expense. At anyone's expense. Yeah, but it was more than just self-preservation. There's something else going on with you. Is that right? Hey, you tell me. That night dad beat the fuck out of us? Which night? You know which night. The three of us were supposed to sneak out after they fell asleep and run next door to the McGrath's. Kenny and I made it there, but you were nowhere to be seen. I told you, Mom caught me climbing out the window and told Dad. Bullshit, Andrea! Dad showed up at the McGrath's like two minutes after we did. How'd he know where we were going? I don't know! Maybe they heard us planning our great escape. Why'd we involve those people anyway? We could've called 911. Well, I thought it'd be better to have an adult call, because we're fucking kids! How was I supposed to know they'd slam the door shut? Well, you showed them. Hey! They could have saved us months of abuse. What was it, another six months? A year before Kenny's teacher saw bruises on his arm? Turned in mom and dad? Even after they removed us, you still tried to cover for them. It was conditioned behavior. Don't you get it? The two of you think I'm some sort of monster. You are a monster. Everybody in your life serves a purpose. Just look at the lifestyle you live. Yeah, what about it? That was pretty smart, kidding. Pregnant by some rich old guy and cleaning him out in your divorce. Hey, Shannon's hooked you up big time. Leave her out of this. Why don't you leave her out of this? Still the t-shirt in her bedroom? Granddaddy's little girl? What the fuck kind of reason could you possibly have bringing Shannon around mom and dad? You're in no position to judge me. Is this just another attempt by you to gain their approval? You gave away your first baby to make them happy. How old were you? 18? Why didn't you just leave with her? You left right after that anyway. You don't know a thing about me. Started it where you left off. There's two people inside you wanted to see.
Go on. You've been here before. Don't do anything stupid. Remember, out here, when you scream, it doesn't make a sound. After you. Mom? I'm upstairs. Come on down. I have a surprise for you. Shannon with you? No, she's at Doug's this week. Okay, I'll be down in a minute. Nothing's changed. People don't change. They just get older. What is this? Is that any way to speak to your children? We're all here for a family reunion. The five of us together, one last time. Is that why you're holding it down? It's for old time's sake. Only this time, I'm pointing the gun at you. And Kenny and John have the cameras. In this house, a camera's more dangerous than a gun. What are you talking about? Oh, come on. Loyal to the bitter end, eh, Mom? Kenny? Do you know what they're talking about? I don't know. He might have blocked out certain things. But you know. I know what? That we weren't perfect parents? I know that. But you had everything you needed. You had a roof over your head. You had clothes and food. We did the best we could. Did I say you could move? Did I? No, you didn't. I won't move again. Just. Don't do anything stupid. Don't tell me what to do. Okay. You're never going to tell me what to do again. Okay, I get it. I don't want the three of you to ruin your lives. You don't give a shit about us. I care. You're always towing the company line. You did the best that you could. You care. We were there, Mom. We know what happened. And Dad lies and you swear to it. It's not true. Seriously. What are we to you, Mom? You're my children. No, I know you gave birth to us, but you never took care of us. Never worried about our well-being, our schoolwork, whether we were clean or safe. All we ever got from you was anger or indifference. That's how I was raised. Nobody showed me any love or caring. You have no idea how my parents abused me. Here we go again. And your grandparents abused your parents, and their parents abused them, and dad abused you. Is that your excuse? It's not an excuse! At what point do you take responsibility for your own actions? When do you break the cycle? Have the three of you come here to have some sort of final say? Is that what you want? Your father's dying. You want to shoot me? Fine. I have nothing left anyway. You want to shoot your dad? He's all yours. What's left of him? You'd be doing him a favor. We'll see about that. Now start up the stairs slowly. I want the two of you in front of me. The enemy of my enemy is not my friend. Hold up, Mom. When you get into that room, I don't want you anywhere near that nightstand. Now that's where you and Dad keep your gun. After you.
Gonna look at what the cat dragged in. Suppose you're here to bid me a fond farewell. I didn't think so. John and Kenny are making quite the interesting movie. Well, I just see the camera. You know all about making movies, right, Dad? I figured that's where this is heading. But, Daddy, you have no idea. Not right. Remember Judge Stevens and the McGraths? I remember those assholes. You should see what they did to him. Are we talking past tense? We are. You <laughs> fucking pussies. You ate a lot of half dead to hatch some revenge bullshit. I thought I made men out of you. Like you? Watch it, kid. Or what? What are you gonna do? You can't do shit to us now. You can't do shit to me. Except baby watch me die. You'd be surprised how horrible we can make your last hour. Let's see what you got. That's some tough talk. But you know you're gonna step and fetch it here as your ass covered. I don't need anybody to cover my ass. My mom never did? You sound like a whiny little bitch. Andrea never lied to the social worker? When I was little, my old man beat the shit out of me and I took it. Didn't we just hear this downstairs? I didn't run around bitching by a bed ahead of you. No. You just beat the shit out of your wife and kids, you sick fuck! Don't you talk to your father that way. I'll talk to him any way I want, you two for that matter. Come on! Two of you and your sob childhood bullshit. Bring it to me! What else your old man do to you? John! That's the last time you'll ever touch me. Stop it! Go ahead and hit me, it's not the first punch I've taken. Back off! Or I'll shoot you right now. Kenny! <laughs> The next one won't be a warning. Move away from the gun. Okay. It's all right, baby girl. Let them do what they gotta do. I'm not keeping them from you. You're in on this with them? It's just they were here for different reasons. Where are we going? I'll tell you when to stop. Just keep going. Are you okay? I'm fine. Don't help them. Fine. You can stop now.
start digging. I'm not going to do that. You had no problem doing it before. This has gone far enough. <laughs> oh! 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 What's this about, Andrea? Do you think I'm playing games? Dig. You're almost there. This won't change a thing. Well, for me. Do you know I was content? Watching Daddy suffer? A long, painful death? His punishment for everything he did to us. But John and Kenny made me realize that wasn't enough. They made me realize people should be held accountable for their actions. John. What the fuck? What the three of you do? Not me. Them. She was my baby. Kristen? When mom and dad made you give up? The one they took from me. You killed her baby. Which one of you did it? Which one of you killed an infant? It was the both of them. You and Kenny were gone that night. You were out with your friends. You could blame me for never wanting to be at home. I was sleeping in my room, and Krista was in her bassinet. She wasn't even a week old. I woke up in the middle of the night call it mother's intuition and she was gone I knew it was them right away and I thought they had taken her to the basement but it was worse I saw mom 
running into the woods. Chased after her and wound up here. They had already dug her grave. And Mom threw my baby. She threw her into this hole like a piece of garbage. And Daddy, you crushed her skull with that brick. I tried to stop them, I did. But Mom beat me with her gun and said she'd shoot me. And Daddy, do you remember what you said to me when I was on the ground bleeding and crying? It's for the best, baby girl. It's for the best. Why? Why did you do that? Because it's what Mom wanted. When did Mom ever have a say with Dad? When she threatened to turn him in for everything he did to us. But what did your baby have to do with that? Make me understand! You should have left us alone. Left what alone? You don't want to know. I want to know! I want to know how you could kill your granddaughter! She wasn't his granddaughter. What? She was perfect. Her eyes were beautiful. Her skin, she looked just like her father. No fucking way. Are you serious? You fucking did that to her? And you kept it? She was our baby. It was a freak. No, she wasn't. You just didn't want to lose your husband. What were you thinking? That's why you made him kill her. I tried to turn you in, but I couldn't. When I left that night, I never planned on coming back. But I wanted you to see Shannon. I wanted you to see what you'd lost. Uh, you showed me. I'm feeling all teary-eyed about the damage I've done. What did you want from me? Some sort of deathbed revelation. Find the error of my ways. I don't give a shit about any of the three of you. Shannon, for your dead baby. I don't care what you say. Or what you do. I've made more impact on your lives than any of you ever made on mine. You fucking piece of shit! Think you're gonna have the final say? Done! No, I don't fuck what you've done! Not here, not this way! I am fucking your life now! Jesus Christ. Keep an eye on them. I don't think they're going anywhere.
Don't you fucking die. I hope I ruin your plans. No! No, no, no. I knew you valued your pathetic life. Now get up! I can't. It's amazing what you can do when you put your mind to it. I told you to get up! Move! I'll never understand. You left your baby in a shallow grave and you let them get away with it. You let dad get away with it like she didn't matter. And then you used Shannon to try to get some sort of validation from him. We all have to answer for our actions. There's no secret room where we can hide from mom and dad. Shannon's better off this way. Hey, get back here! Are you done? Yeah. She's in there. You need a hand? I'm fine. Let's bring him down. What is that? So what do you do? You sit down here and watch these? John, what's on these tapes? Yeah, John. What's on the tapes? Shut up. I want to know. I really need you to remember. My three kids. One of them runs away from home. One of them has memory block. One hides behind the box. No more hiding. To destroy your demons, first you have to face them. You and I are on those tapes. 
with Dad. I'm sure Andrea's on some of them, too. Mom worked one of the cameras. She'd move all around us. And they had their second camera on a tripod. He wanted to cover all the angles. It started when we moved here, after we came back from Helen's. Down here in this room. Secret room. That's what Andrea called it. He probably started molesting her at the other house. I don't know. Andrea came up to our room that night. Said she had found a room in the basement. That's right. She said it was a secret room. Where the three of us could hide from mom and dad. And they'd never find us. But when we got down here, they were waiting for us. With the cameras. You put her up to that, didn't you? And he made us undress. And started touching you. Then he made me come over. Don't be afraid of the cameras, Kenny. Your name's gonna be up in lights. I remember everything you did to us. And everything you made us do to you. For years! Is this all of them? Is it? It's all of them. Bastards, anyway. You made copies, you scumbag fuck! I where are they? They're all over the place. Where are the fucking copies? Till you can on him forever. What'd you do with them? The internet's a wonderful thing. <laughs> well, this is our movie. Two of you are the stars now. The broken parents. Thumbs up. When we were kids, you terrified us. We lived in constant fear. Every time you raised your voices, walked into a room, or even looked our way, you were these imposing figures, bigger than life. <laughs> Not 
anymore. Now that we're grown and on a level playing field, we can see the both of you for what you really are. Broken by your parents. Broken by genetics. by life. So are you. Free. See what they're doing. Making me feel so free Well, can I find my way? Or will you let me be?
Sell the earth until you walk on my rock. 